Yeah. Okay. Glenn Murray, the overwhelming frontrunner in Winnipeg's mayoral race, has a lengthy resume. He spent six years as mayor of Winnipeg and seven years as an Ontario Liberal MPP. He resigned from that job in 2017 to take on what he described as his dream job, the executive director of the Pembina Institute. That's a clean energy think tank based in Alberta. One year and five days later, Murray resigned from Pembina. According to former employees, a former board member, and correspondence obtained by CBC News, Murray was forced out over complaints about his management. Those complaints range from being difficult to brief, showing up late to some meetings with government and business leaders, and attending meetings without telling his staff who he was meeting with. There was no uh, sort of certainty that we were going to get any outcomes from any of the meetings that he was having, whether with, with government partners or, or corporate partners. Murray also faced more serious allegations. In an email dated two months after Murray joined Pemina, a former employee alleges Murray breached confidentiality. He has been told things in strict confidence that he comments on out loud at different staff meetings. This is confidential information told to him in strict confidence about sexual harassment, mental health, etc. This should be kept totally confidential and not be brought to light at every call or conversation in the hallway. I have concerns about lawsuits for defamation or harassment. The first person Murray hired to work at Pembina described Murray as a gifted, charismatic speaker who ultimately turned out to be unreliable. I've seen him give speeches, 20, 30 minute speeches with no notes or a borrowed PowerPoint and hold the audience in the palm of his hand. And they all thought he was fantastic afterwards. I've seen him do that. But the rest of the time, he's chaotic. He's a chaotic personality. In March 2018, Pembina staff and board members gathered at an annual retreat in Banff. Former staff describe it as a shambles and say this served as a catalyst for Pembina employees to share each other's stories about Murray. That was actually when it crystallized, to be very honest. The people within the organization started planning what we had to do to get him removed because he was having so much damage, doing so much damage. According to correspondence obtained by CBC News, Pembina enlisted George Green, the founder of consulting firm Stratos, to interview Pembina leaders and survey staff during the summer of 2018. On August 24, 2018, Green presented his findings to Pembina's board at an emergency meeting. On August 31, 2018, former Pembina board chair David Runnels presented Murray with a termination notice. Murray was then granted the option of resigning, which he did on September 9, 2018. Murray made a statement today claiming he resigned for personal reasons and that his time at Pembina coincided with changes to his personal life. And it is clear that I allowed that pressure to spill over into my work life. I am sorry for this and I take responsibility. Murray also said he and Pembina agreed his leadership style was a bad fit. Together we came to the realization that parting was the best way forward. We also found other allegations about Murray's time at Pembina, allegations that didn't contribute to his departure. Former staff say Murray drank excessively at Pembina social functions and public events. He would regularly get very intoxicated at events that Pembina hosted. Just rip roaring, re drunk, and really, like, people obviously knew he was drunk. Murray and his campaign didn't respond to requests for comment on allegations about excessive drinking. Former Pemina staff also say Murray engaged in sexual innuendo during one on one meetings. Ed Whittingham, Murray's predecessor at Pemina, said Murray did this to him during Murray's first day on the job. He said some things about his personal life and particularly the openness of his relationship with his husband and openness in terms of having sex outside the relationship, that made me feel very uncomfortable and immediately had me thinking, my gosh, have we made the wrong choice? Kenyon also alleges Murray got physical with him. He alleges Murray came up behind him on the dance floor at a Pembina social event in Banff in March 2018. It was very crowded in the dance floor, right? So it's pretty hard for people to see what was going on exactly. You're just like, oh, come on, man, I'm being like grinded by my boss on the dance floor. Kenyon said there were no witnesses. He said he told his supervisor and several colleagues about the alleged incident, but didn't take the complaint any further. Whittingham said Kenyon told him about the alleged incident two days later. I've been going over in my mind every interaction, every conversation, and every opportunity where something could have happened. I'm not perfect, 
Who is? But I am certain the reported sexual harassment from today is not true. Murray's lawyer, Bailey Harris, also said in the letter to CBC News, Mr. Murray wishes to be very clear. No allegation or report of sexual harassment was ever raised with Mr. Murray while he was employed by the Pemina Institute or after. The former chair of Pemina's board confirmed to CBC News allegations of this nature were not raised with Murray. But Duncan Kenyon said today he stands by his allegation and questioned how Murray would know what he did given his alleged level of intoxication the night of the alleged incident. The Pembina Institute declined to comment on any allegations against Murray or the circumstances surrounding his departure. In a statement, Pembina Executive Director Chris Severson Baker said, Pembina has comprehensive workplace policies and procedures in place, including policies and procedures governing respectful workplace behaviors and the prudent use of resources and assets. CBC News asked Whittingham and Kenyon what they thought about Murray's ability to serve in public office. It's incumbent upon him to explain the work that he's done and why he is now qualified for a much larger leadership role, when it was very clear in the span of a year that he was completely unqualified for a smaller leadership role. I would really not want to ever want to see someone have to work in the office with him based upon how he was at Pemina. Murray took no questions today. He said he'd spend Friday away from public events so he wouldn't distract from Truth and Reconciliation Day. Bartley Kivas, CBC News, Winnipeg. The allegations against Murray led several others who are also running for mayor to make statements today. Candidate Scott Gillingham said he is concerned about what would happen to city staff if Murray becomes mayor. The story describes serious allegations of misconduct and harassment. And there's a pattern that seems to follow him from city to city to city. The article presents a picture of chaos and instability. There could be trouble attached to this, and the city does not need that. So I will call for him to do the right thing and to withdraw from the mayor's race and then deal with the personal issues and such, and, and, I, hope him, and I wish him well in that.